Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the two different ways you can make asynchronous requests in React. The first is the promise, and the second is the async await. Let's get this started. The promise method has been the traditional go-to method before the async await was introduced. And then this was used to make asynchronous requests for fetching data. If you're unfamiliar with asynchronous requests, it is the ability to fetch information, but knowing that it's going to take a little bit of time for that data to come back. So let's get this example started using the promise based method. What we're first going to do is create a internal state called users. And we'll just initialize it with an empty array. If you're unfamiliar with hooks, I would recommend going to my previous lessons where I talk about the use state and the use effect hook. With that being said, let's move on to using the use effect here to make our asynchronous requests. We're going to add an empty array so that it only makes this function call once. And in here, we're going to call fetch users promise because we're going to be using the promise method. And since that function doesn't exist yet, let's create that now. And in here, I'm using a HTTP request library called Axios to make my requests. So what I'm going to do here is use axios.get. And I have the URL already copied, and I'll add that in the description below. And what this is going to do is it's going to make a asynchronous request to the JSON placeholder API. And to retrieve the result of that information, what we need to do is attach a dot then. And it'll come back out as a result. Let's console log out that result here and see what happens. I realized that this also is included, which I don't know why, but let's remove that. Cool. So now that we have this information here, we can see that data exists here. And for each data, there's a name, a username, et cetera, et cetera. So here we're going to set our users to our results dot data. And here, let's just console log out the users. Awesome. So initially it's an empty array and then it'll output the users as so. We can also add a dot catch block in case an error exists. And for now, we'll just do console.log e. Sweet. So this is how we've been traditionally making asynchronous requests. And right now it seems very doable and manageable, but there have been history of adding too many promises on top of each other. So you could get caught in the dot then hell. Another possibility is that you're doing dot then here. And then you do another dot then here. And then it just keeps going and going and going. And in terms of syntax, it's not very clean. Another alternative that you can try to do is using the async await method. So the async await method is fairly similar. And at the end of the day, you are doing the same thing, just a different way. So here you can say fetch users async. And the biggest difference that we want to do here is that we're going to add the word async in front, which indicates that it's an asynchronous function. And we're going to do something similar like the axios.get, but instead of doing a dot then here, what we're going to do is define a variable called result. And this could be anything you want to call it. And I'm going to write await in front of the axios.get function. So let's just copy this here. And let's see the result. So for now, let's comment this out and add this function here and call this one. What you're going to notice here is that I was able to achieve the same result using the async away method using only one line versus a few lines using the, the promise method. We didn't have to use a dot then. We didn't have to define another variable here. It's just all done in one go. And it actually waits until this fetch is complete to log out the result. Syntactically, it's just very clean in a sense that you could keep everything in one line. You can make another request here, like result two to another axios.get request. 
in a sense, it's a lot more clear on what you're trying to accomplish with these asynchronous requests versus having a continuation of all these dot dens. To perform error handling on a async await function, what you need to do is add a try catch block here. And you could shove in all of the functionality that you're doing to make that asynchronous request and setting the users. And in here, let's just say console.log e. And obviously you can you can figure out your own way of error handling here, but this is just for example purposes. So there are a lot more gains and benefits of using async await. And if you do just decide to use promises, no harm, no foul. But in my opinion, the landscape is moving more towards the async await methodology for making asynchronous requests. I hope this lesson was helpful for you in understanding the difference between async await and promise. I'm going to attach a couple of links below that talk about the benefits of using async await over promise. So yeah, that's it for me. Talk to you in the next lesson.